Welcome back here to PTM Racing TV, where we're live here tonight with the Season 2 opener here of the Drivers of Pushing Limits Racing League, their very first race on the new season. It takes them down to Richmond Raceway, where tonight we'll see the drivers go at it with the absolute hardest of hard trucks to master. This is the Silverado Legacy Trucks here now on the show. Hi, everyone. I am Christian, the Crusader Driver, and welcome back to the show as always. Right a little bit behind right now, unfortunately. We have uh, had a little bit of technical delays here and uh, not been the uh, best start to our day, unfortunately. 
but thankfully we're getting a little things wrapped up around here. Looks like the drivers are doing much the same. First time out here to see these drivers and see them in their uh, their new world, their new driving series here. It's going to be interesting to see how well they'll handle the nerves and how well they'll handle themselves out here with the way these things play out. That's currently drivers getting ready for the next pace last round. Sounds like we might have a few drivers that are still getting put out there. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. We'll start up with a gridding order here in just a brief moment. We're currently still trying to put things in place here. Unfortunately, we were not set like we were supposed to. Thanks a lot, producers. But that's all right. We're just about getting things fixed up here. So we're going to get the last minute preparations in, and then we will get to you guys here on this race here tonight. Solid lineup to say the least here. A solid amount of drivers. Over 16 drivers have gridded with us here tonight. Let's take a look at them right now as we put them up on the scoreboard here. Robert Collin, the Ralph Snake will be in the number 21 is outside. Bob Hutchins in the 77. Run number two is the 07 is Cindy the Colder Taylor with the Matthew Hoffer in the 84 28 on his outside. Run number three, Chantel Throttle Pottle in the 08 to her outs. And then runner outside of her will be Keith Checkmate Taylor in the 08. Run number four, Warren Young in the number one is outside the 51 of Eric Gann. Run number five, Jeffrey Todd Tufson in the 72 is outside the 66 of Justin Sonaker. Row number six, Tory Thompson in the 88 is outside the 48 of Stanley Pottle. And your final star is Steve Willett, Wally Babb in the 099 is outside the 20 of Jeffrey Oaks. And Michael Vine and Nick Hearn supposed to be on the track on the field as the race fans go crazy. We're getting green flag racing here. We are up and running. Off the start through the chicanes, immediately out of the gate here. The five already hammering down, trying to stick with the momentum there. The 28 of Matthew Hopper going right to the outside wall. These things are not going to be for the weak of heart. These sharks are designed to torture and hurt you as you go around this track. You have got to be very, very careful when you run these things out here. These things are all about timing and smoothness. And Robert Conn right now seems to have that dialed into its E as he currently holds the race lead with Bob Hutchins and Cindy Colter Taylor falling from behind. Still a side-by-side -side battle, though, with Chantel Apollo and Matthew Comfort as they lead it in. Right out on the outside corner yet again. They'll fall back behind once more here as the field starts to kind of pace in and start to field in. The 72 of Jeffrey Todd Tufts having the early advantage there on the 51 of Eric G. Gann. Eric Gann making his debut here with pushing limits. He's been kind of all over the place on our series as of late. Been running the dirt. Now he's running some asphalt out here. It's good to see him having a good time out here, having a little bit of a shot or two with these guys and gals. He's currently, we have still a lot of drivers fighting for position and jockeying around. Bob Hutchins taking now over the position here of Cindy the Closer Taylor as we go to the onboard camera here. On oh, the haul shot out of the starts here, it still seems like Bob is doing a pretty good job here, staying with his run, staying his momentum key, but the thing is, the 21 of old Ralph Snake, Robert Kahn has the early advantage here. Austin Cook coming in tonight saying, let's go air again. For them on uh, right now in the comment section. Three wide salutes. They lead it into turn one. Oh, that's not something you usually want to do around here at turn three, I should say. But they hold it still very nicely done there by the 55 of Vineyard. Cindy the Closer Taylor and Bob Hutchins to stay out of trouble there. Takes a lot of driving to hold on to these things. Much let's go three wide with them and hold that line in. Offer now on the attack. There you see the 28 trying to make a little bit of a jump, a little bit of a shark. Maybe have something for him a little later on. We'll have to see right now because he's still a ways away from the race leaders and all them. These things, generally, the most of the time you ever hear me talking about them is if I ever ran them over at Daytona, which I have a story about that. I may talk about it see later on. This has been some pretty good close corner contact racing here. I've been surprised here because they haven't gone too far away from each other. I know the way the setup is, is they actually tighten it up and they really get even a little bit more of a run or two to help it work in. And I'm glad they did because it has made an improvement or two out on the track. But I will say, man, 
I had a little bit of a practice in my uh, old fan tech number 14, and I tried it out. I'm thinking, man, how are these drivers even going to run this thing here tonight? This is like literally one of the hardest things I've ever had to handle in my, in my time I've been on iRacing. Other than maybe those sprint cars. Thanks a lot, Eli the Wild Child. You'll see him later on here in just a little bit as we go on board there for Jeffrey Oaks, the number 20. It's good to see him back out here full force and attacking here as he moves around the 55 of Michael Vineyard. Vineyard falling back just a little bit here, not able to keep up with the pace, keep up with the momentum. As Keith Jack May Taylor now starting to see a little bit of an opportunity or two, starting to push more momentum on his end. Now you're probably wondering at home, why am I talking about how loose and how tough these things are to handle compared to a normal NASCAR Gander Outdoors truck series? Well, I'll tell you more about that in just a minute because Cindy the Coulter Taylor saying, well, I don't want to hear too much about that right now because I'm handling my nerves just fine with this thing here, Crusader. Why don't we have a little run here with old Bob? Hutchins and him putting up a fight, putting on a show out of the gate here. Still drivers hanging in for dear life. Packing them, stacked, racked back all that way through here. Hoffert desperately trying to get something going for the Summit race in 28 up to that 08 there of Keith Checkmate Taylor. On their way through the field. Looks like some problems down there. Michael Vineyard, a little bit of a crash here on the front straightaway. Problems for the 55. That sports for the caution. Caution down. We have our first caution of the night. Yeah, just like that, when you think you can just get away from things here, apparently the wrecks have to come as well with it. Look at the instant replay here on your screen here. Looks like maybe Vineyard might have got a little too hot on the edge there. Might a little too hard on the throttle. Up into the wall protection he goes, and Dustin Sonaker and him have a little tussle, if you will, out of the turn four, and they bump and run their way to the end. Thankfully, though, all drivers okay. They will be able to refire, restack, re-rack, and all that, and then I'll get them settled back down, hopefully. 55, though, I got to believe not too thrilled about that little issue he had there. First caution of the night here, and probably not the one I think they were warning the most of in this case. And yes, we do know that the uh, logo just moved around here. We do apologize for that. Before, we were told earlier that we were going to get that fixed, but because the drivers basically kind of came on at the wrong time when we were not even expecting them to, we weren't even sure when to get them on. So apologies in advance if everything kind of looks a little weird here for the moment. Thought we were going to make. We were not expecting this many drivers here tonight, so we had to. Well, we got to start moving that logo around a little bit. With 16 drivers, man, we didn't want to cut anybody's name, so we had to do something about it. And yes, yes, I know, we should have done something beforehand. But again, blame the producers. They are the ones that made me late tonight. <laughs> I was in the booth, and I was ready to go. And next thing I know, hey, wait a minute, we got to do this and that, this and that. Like, wait a minute, I thought we already had this set when we were ready to go. Come on now. Anyway, coming out of the night here at Pope Kim. Watching Jack Dow, that's good, brothers. Let go, old Jack, all the way. Pope, good to have you on board here, sir. Yeah, I remember Jack Dowell, Motorsports. We had a good working relationship with them. Still work with them quite well. Know them too well here on PT Race TV. Part of the old Backfire Sim Racing group as we used to broadcast for them. If you guys like to, check them out as well on their Friday night series. Might be interested to race with them a little bit. Currently, though, we are here on the Monday night series. Here are two events, main events, we're coming your way here. First off is, of course, these drivers from Pushing Limits Racing League. Their very first showcase of the season two starters and trust me i say it, this is a big field but there's actually more waiting in the wings we have yet to see and you know what the crazier part is you thought last season had a lot of craziness to it oh no we have much more coming your way this season i'm not gonna spoil what i've seen of that list of drivers that list of tracks and cars and stuff they're gonna be at but let me tell you, there are some series we've never seen on PTN Racing TV before. And there are some tracks in there we've never shown on the show before. I guarantee you this season is the wildest and the craziest I've ever seen for just what you have to do as a driver, what you have to do to learn how to manipulate each car, each truck, each vehicle out there. 
it is going to be a rock solid affair there is going to be some absolute craziness in between and it's calming at your way and all coming down here soon enough base lights coming off on the car now we're ready to get back to racing here Pope Kim coming from, from coming up for us tonight from watching from Accra, Ghana. Jack, Pope, good to have you on board, sir. As I mentioned before, we are pleased to have you as well as the fans here. It looks like Mr. Damon McNeil said stop on in. Good to hear from you, Mr. Sir. I think it's the first time I've ever seen you on the show here. I hope you have liked, followed up here, and subscribed here on our show. And I hope you like what you see right now, man. We're getting ready to get back to the action here. Line them up out of turn four. Line them in. Bring the green fly back out, and we're underway. About one third of the way through this one so far, and Robert Kahn has been the man. They're all hunting down. But here comes that 0 8 of key checkmates. Ayler sneaks his way inside line. Everybody clean in the back. Easy, Tori, easy. Tori Thompson at 88. I saw him get wobbly, loosey goosey out there, but he managed to hold the line, keep it stable. Does 0 8 of Bob Hut of key checkmate Taylor going to work here with Bob Hutchins? In the 77 right now, while the five of the pedal of that number five machine coming to the inside, rocking a little bit of that P10 racing pedal in the middle racing leg truck tonight. While Matthew Hopper in the 28 Summit racing machine trying to look to burn up the heat and burn up the truck and make that that thing as like as sweet as can be, I'll give him that any day of the week. Comes right back around now, down out of turn two. There you go here. Everybody's still in a hot pursuit while Jeffrey Oaks now starting to make his way through the field. He's got Warren Young in the number one. Uh, got, got number one's Kyle Larson machine. That national that national nation's guard machine up tonight. Good to see him back here with us here on the show. We haven't seen old Warren in a while, but it's good to see he's still with us. He's got that Jeep. He's got that Kelly Blue Book number 20 right there in his line as he gets right back on the throttle. Con though, absolutely dominating this one, man. He just does not seem to give an inch when it comes to running anything out here. Right back into the corner zone here yet again. Now it is Jeffrey Oaks and Warren Young at each other's doorsteps here. Side by side battles as they lead it out of turn two. The Kelly Blue Book Silverado and then that Nation's Guard Silverado. Again, there's all of them are Silverados here tonight, folks. Just heads up. All trying to fight their way around. Tory Thompson, a little bit of problems there at turn four, it appears. He gets it refired and back out on track, though, as currently the rest of the field tries to make their way in to get up there to Khan. But Robert the Rattlesnake Khan is just showing you why he does not play around on anything asphalt-wise. He can, hammer, he can hammer it hard, too, on dirt, but it seems like an asphalt. He's a different story. And how about this? Look at this little battle coming out of turn four. The ladies of racing here are going to fight it out. Cindy the Coulter Taylor and the Throttle Chantel Bottle both in a heated doorstep here. Toy Thompson, though, on the back stretch. Coming to a sudden hold here. The 88 getting out of the way. He does not want to cause the wreck. Good driving on his end. Good sportsmanship as well. But how much did that affect the rest of the field? Well, it affected a few of them because right now the 0-8, a little bit of trouble. There's they go three wide slope there. The 0-7 and the 5 in it. Cindy and Chantel having to avoid the necessary troubles there. I believe that was a 0-99. Wally Babb, or Wally Babb, I should say. Wally having all sorts of problems here tonight. He's like he's not getting anything to go for himself. The nation's guard number one now looking to possibly make a move or two off of the throttle. Chantel had a good battle there between her and the closer, but Cindy managing to outwit and outsmart the turn and managing to get a good run off of it. They'll hammer him down here as they come on turn two. Oh no. Major problems there for Matthew Hopper. In a little wall protection, he goes there, almost taking the five, the 20, and the one with him, but impressive. Driving to say the least, are these drivers able to manage and conserve their tires around and get the tr car, truck to stabilize in? Impressive. Great stuff. 
And again, of course, we just continue to see these battles going on. I'm thoroughly impressed right now that they're even able to hold them. And I'll tell you why now, because oh, that might be a reason why right there is because these things are not built for the usual iRacing conditions. What iRacing did is they pretty much left these things high and dry. There's a reason why they're called the legacy versions. Now, yes, you can still run these things and you can figure out how to get them to be as similar to the Gander outdoor trucks. But the biggest difference is, is the difference in weight balance and control. And the way they're set up, they are very much looser and a lot harder to handle out there. Take it that they like is you're trying to drive a sprint, you're trying to drive an asphalt sprint car, and then you're coming, but you're coming from a street stock. Like a street stock, if you figure out how to, you can full throttle them off on certain areas and make sure as long as you turn in just right, you may get a little loose and a little wobbly, but you can pretty much hold those things pretty much wide open on most tracks sometimes. Whereas a sprint car, you couldn't do that exactly. You try doing that and try to full throttle around with those things on the first cold tires, man, you're in trouble. Those, those things are going to be a nightmare to handle later on. Think of it like that with these heavy pieces of equipment. Just add a lot more weight, make it a truck, and there you go. That's pretty much what the issue is. Wally Babb now sneaking his way on the inside there of the 28s. Matthew Hoffer. Man, you want to take a look at this here right now. Look at Wally. He's having to be very gentle on that throttle. Again, referring back to what I was talking about earlier, you have to run that throttle in a little more smooth. You can't just overdrive it in there and think it will work that way. It will not hold. And that's exactly right now what they're dealing with, what they're struggling to handle with. Matthew Hopper right now still with the advantage. He put himself in a good position. While the rest of the field right now trying to get back up there, Robert the Rattlesnake Khan continuing his pure dominance of this one. You hear him, how he comes off that run there. There's no subtlety there. He's just laying into it, making sure it steers in just right. And one of the biggest differences too, you may have seen as well, when we were talking earlier about Wally and him was how well he's able to manage the throttle rhythm. The thing is, when you're in these trucks, you're in these cars in general, you have to make sure you have a good throttle control and throttle rhythm to keep the momentum and speed up. Otherwise, if you over, if you try to underdo it and overdo it, sometimes it's easy to get these things loose, and then next thing you know, it's going to give you into more problems than it's worth. That's why when you hear drivers talk about it all the time, it's like throttle control, throttle control. You want to get the speeds built up. You want to get the runs going in. That's exactly what they're doing with right now here. The city, the closer of City Taylor. Now on the prowl, now on the attack here. Running hard, running in quickly here, right through in the back. She's been at this game for a while. She knows how to do it, but there's one driver who knows how to do it as well. It's definitely that 77 of Bob Hutchins. Hutchins may be an old timer out here, but let me tell you, he sure does not drive like one. He, he drives more like he know, he's he been running since he was like five years old. And he's probably, and he runs like he's a 22-year-old sometimes, I'll say. I'm, I'm 23. Take that into town. He can kick my butt to a country mile. I can barely figure out how to run asphalt sometimes. These two just still going out here, man. They're not giving up. As I say that, though, the 77 of Hutchins. A little loosey-goosey and a little too much throttle. That doesn't help you much, my friend. Problems there for him, and that will set him back a ways. The damage badly on that five machine. Talk about hammer down on that one. Jeffrey Todd Tuss and Matthew Hoffer now moving in. Todd Tuss, well, you can see why he's getting some speed there. He's got a cleaner truck than most of them out there. And generally speaking, that warrants for more speed, so of course he's catching up a little bit. All works out in the end. All works out in your favor. Keep, keep it going. Eric Ann now starting to make a little bit of a run. I'll tell you one thing right now, folks. He's not running on a normal controller or normal uh, steering wheel, I should say, and pedals. No, he's actually using an RC controller out there because of this one thing he told me about is that he's really good at figuring out how to kind of figure out how to use controllers when he probably shouldn't out there. And it seems like he's been getting much better every time we see him. And on the asphalt tonight, he's doing a pretty solid job, I must admit. Battling up there with the guys in the front and the up to the back. Todd Tufts trying to make a move around there. Old Hoffy, but Hoffer blocking and defending while Chantel tries to keep her somewhat of a rhythm and somewhat of a line out there. Still hanging in there.
Run through the field here, back onto the inside zone. Here comes Essence Stonecker, it's us it's sneaking their way in. Eric Gann, give credit for credit to to Mr. Gann. He is making some moves here tonight. 20 laps remain in this one here. Currently, the Sprite, number 51. Looks like he might have a run or two coming up on him here. It's odds us, much looks like he's doing much the same. Very gentle off that run, off that throttle rhythm. Can't overdrive it, can't over underdo it. Oh, again, straight back to the bottom now. He's trying to make a move there, but is it really a smart move to go that low? Well, he's just trying to make it work anyway. Pit stops now coming into effect here. Bob Hutchins goes into pit road. That will move the drivers up one position or two here, depending on where they're at. For one driver, well, he's not really having to worry about anything there. How in the heck is this rattlesnake even allowed to drive in these things, much less run? He's been dominating this one the entire night, and he has just been completely decimating these drivers. Cindy Nicole Taylor and Jeffrey Oaks and Warren Young are the only ones coming close to that. And Warren right now actually having a little bit of a tussle, if you will, here with Oaksy. Warren, after being about on about a hiatus for a while here, it's still good to see him finally back out there and trying to fight out there with these guys again. Robert Ross, thank God, entering into pit road. Sydney stays out. Which means for the first time tonight, I can now say it with, and say it with my pride, say it with your crowd. You know what I'm going to say. If you've been here before, we have ourselves a new leader. It is the closer taking over the race lead with only 16 laps to go. But is she going to head to pit road sooner or later? I don't know, to be honest with you. I think it might be time to start thinking about it. If you look at the pit strategy right now, well, Keith and Pottle stayed out for pretty much the majority of this one. And caution comes out here. We've got problems. We've got problems. Major problems. Oh, my. There's problems down there. Holy smokes, big wreck out of turn three. We didn't even get a view of that one, much less an idea what the heck happened to the last minute damage badly done up on some of these guys here and gals. What the heck happened? To the PTM instant replay, we see it here. Let's take a look. Uh-oh, the 55, that's fine yard. Oh, he tried to get out of there and Chantel trying to avoid it. Todd Tuff's trying to get out of there. Oh my. Upside down, up on a roof, and crashed hard there. Good Lord almighty. Chantel going for a ride and a half there, and oh Lord. Take a look from the onboard camera here of uh, Mr. Justin Sonaker here. He's going to give us a good idea of what he saw when we were on the on camera there. Let's take a look here as they're coming out of the turn. Good to look at that little, little turquoise color there, that red or that blue and orange. See the wreck comes. Woo and thank you, the racing lord, for that little gap you gave me in between. I really needed that. And we'll take one more look here now. Let's take a look at this here. See, you're getting an onboard camera here with the throttle Chantel Pottle. This is leading up to that moment there, unfortunately. She was already having trouble. This truck was having all sorts of problems kind of keeping going. See her seeing the 55. He's trying to bring it back down. She's trying to avoid it. Next thing you know, it's a little spin around. Truck's going upside down. I've been in that shoe before, usually a Daytona. Oh, man, those things do not feel good when you wreck. Oh. And again, just an absolute tough break there for the drivers there, man. That is, that's hard to hear, and that's hard to see. All right, drivers are getting back rack stacked and all that around here. Still a lot of drivers in pit road trying to get the damage cleaned up on these things. It's going to be pretty much a 10 lap to go shootout. And Khan's lead now, after having to go into pit road, might have chose the worst timing and got might have just put himself into a bit of a pickle here. That's going to be that's going to be interesting to see. How well does he hold on to the nerves here? How well does he hold into this, considering what's going to happen here on this restart? Because now... Well, he's going to have to do You see where he's at right now. That 21's in sixth place. 
he's got to find a way to get around some tough drivers in Sonaker, Bob Hutchins, Keith Taylor, and Jeffrey Oaks, and all under about 10 laps. And they're driving on a and they're driving on a truck that honestly is probably the worst handling truck out of the entire sim. Oh, come at me for that one, folks. I said I was nine by I said I was nine by Parson. I swear I will re I'll run my mouth when I have to, and I mean it when I just said there. I absolutely hate this thing, man. This truck is hard to handle. It is hard to deal with. I love the Gander Outdoor Truck Series, but these things are absolute pain in the butt. Even at Daytona, a track that I love running at and I love racing, these things on that track, trying not to tap each other or get loose to slice bit of wreck, it's easier said than done. I've only got one win with these things, and ironically, it's my only win I've ever got at a plate track. It literally happened, I think it was about two or three months ago. Came onto the server, had everything working. I actually almost spun myself out at a turn one and two, actually. I got I got taken for a little ride. Someone tapped me. I managed to save it somehow, which if you, if you know how to run Daytona with these things and save that there and do what I did, honestly, you wouldn't even believe me. Saved it, but ended up everyone in the lead on the last two laps either wrecked out or crashed. And as I was making it through a pack of drivers to get to the final lap, to the final lap out of turn four, I managed to get right out of the right, right to get into the third place. And the next thing you know, everyone was wrecking straight to the bottom and cuts come into me. I don't know how, but I somehow by about five hundredths of a second, I won that one. That was the first time and the only time in a play track I've ever won. But again, this is Richmond is no play track. This is a short track, and it's probably, in my opinion, the most difficult track these drivers will run on when it comes to short track wise. Other than maybe one other. I'm not gonna spoil it yet. Okay, I'll spoil it. It's Bristol Motor Speedway. But I'm not going to spoil what they're going to use there. Let's just say it's something new and something that even I admit, I am extremely curious to see how it'll run. So that's all I'll tell you guys for now. But now, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to run them down, run the field in, pace this one by. This time by the closer. So next next time by, I should say at this point, I thought we were going to go back to the green flag. The yellow is still out. I think they're trying to get drivers to its way back in here. But this next time by, I would resume. Jeffrey Oaks, he hasn't been to victory lane in a while. He would like to change that here and now. Cindy the Colter Taylor, she's no slouch when it comes to being in victory lane this year. She has been probably the most dominant driver on PTM Racing TV when it comes to race wins and possibly comes to anything broadcasted with us. She just continues to dominate no matter what league she's in. It's impressive to say the least. But her brother, Key Checkmate Taylor, has no pushover, and we know. Dustin Sonaker, if he can get it going, he can put up a fight. And right now, he might have one of, if not maybe the best shots at putting a, at putting a full-on metal action here. These drivers have got to push their limits and push themselves to all the fullest. This time by, we go back to the green flag. Coming off out of turn four. Can Khan get through that big pack of drivers right in front of them? We'll see now as they lead it back in. Green flag is out. They've got to be careful going in. Oaks, he goes up high a little bit, trying to stabilize it in, turn it in a little more. Oh, Keith right there with him. Three wide salute right through the back here. That rattlesnake, I knew he was going to try something out there. He's on the move, on the verge. Oh, but he gets second for a ride there by the 48 of Stanley. And Stanley Bottle sends the rattlesnake back to the desert he goes straight down into the grassy plains and that will bring out the caution well uh i wouldn't i want to be robert Conrad right about now let's just say that here's what happened here stanley just gets a slight bit loose coming off he's trying to hit it hard and Con was being very careful, trying to stabilize it, but Warren Young just kind of finished him off there. That's major damage on the back of that, on that one, and the front end of Warren got some damage as well. We'll take a look at the PTM Instant Replay here and show you guys another look at it from the camp for the cockpit view. See right here, that little charge there, that 48 was doing 
Next thing you know, he's getting loose and there you go. Trouble there for him and unfortunately that will set them back again. Cindy the closer Taylor right now is just got to be loving every minute of this because she knows laps are counting down. She knows she doesn't have to really worry too much about it. And with a green-white checker now on display, how will she handle that turn two? Because honestly, turn two and four is where it's going to bite her if she's not careful. I think she has a shot here. Still a good sized crowd here on display here on our show here tonight. Great to have you all on board. Great to hear from you. Great to see you once again. And remember, tonight it's not just one. It is a double header. I Rock Fast and Fun is coming up next after this one. And let me tell you something, folks. You want to talk about some guys that have put on maybe the most insane, crazy finishes. 2021 has been a heck of a year, man. But I tell you one thing. I have never been a part of any racing series, any series of any kind from leagues or anything like that, that hadn't been the finishes as well as we've seen the craziest runs we've ever seen in our lifetime. Man, I tell you one thing, we are coming closer and closer to just seeing some of some of the most some of the greatest racing in the battles I think this year we'll ever see. NASCAR's putting on some good shows as well, but I don't think PT Race TV has ever seen a year like what we've had. We've had from coming off of what we did just a couple of months ago, from having Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming in with us for the first time and racing on the show, to seeing, seeing some of the seeing some of the naturals and the guys out there working on the crews and all them, like Mr. TJ Majors, to even having some celebrity country singers coming on by, to then seeing what, in my opinion, could be some of the most insane finishes, as I mentioned earlier, from a zero point. Zero, 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 finish. Yeah, one ten thousandth of a second was how one of those races went. And it wasn't just one, by the way. It was two, of course. And it was done by the guys you're going to see up next in the Fast and Fun IROC series. And not just on a road course, by the way, but on an oval. Like, how do you even do that? That's not even, that's not even logical. But they found a way to do it. And now with that mindset, that in place, we'll hopefully get you guys a little hype. But... Pushing Limits has put on some shows before, and so far, this has got to be one of the best shows I've seen them put on all year round. Season 1 had its moments, but so far, Season 2, it's off to a tremendous start. And this time by, we're going to see these drivers lay it all on. Pace car comes out of turn 3, and at turn 4, they line it up, down, position, end of the run. You hear the motors rev, you hear the power come to life. They are on the throttle on the gate here to remain. Sending to the inside immediately. Oaksy trying to get a run on the outside. They are side by side, dead even off the track strip. Down to the back stretch into turn three. Checkmate now swings himself in. They've got to be careful about jumping and banging. You don't want to do that around here. Oaksy with the advance here right there behind him. No, Bob Hutchins now gets into the 66 of Sonaker. Bob just took Sonaker completely far right as they come to the white flag. Oaksy trying to hold on for one more time. He wants to win the first one. Will he do it? City will try to get a runner on him on the inside there. Trying to get it on the inside. Oh, she hammers it down to the finish, but by half a truck link, Jeffrey Oaks will win season two season opener. What a race. Impressive display of driving and perseverance by 900th of a second. Jeffrey Oaks will win the first one of the of the season and the first one of the night. How about that race, fans? You wanted to finish. You wanted a battle. Right there is how you put it up. Jeffrey Oaks wins at Richmond. He is the legacy Silverado Truck Series 
champion here tonight. He will win the very first race of the season. And honestly, considering how tough these things are to handle and master, I got to believe he's jumping for joy in that thing. What a finish. 900 of a second. That is some great stuff for them. Put, put up our race results here now. The PTM Race TV results for pushing limits is up on your scoreboard. Jeffrey Oaks, you see it there. 900 of a second was the undoing of Cindy Taylor. Keith Jackmate, though, not a bad third place. Fourth goes to Robert Kahn. Give credit where credit's due. He had to work from the back to get there. Bob Hutchins, well, I mean, that could be uh, talked about a little bit with him and Sonaker. I couldn't tell you what happened exactly there. But it definitely was some hard racing in between, and I think that's all they wanted to know. Jeffrey Todd's up, getting 6th, 7th at Warren Young, 8th to Dustin Sonaker, unfortunately, because of the little bump he took there out of turn 4. And then Eric Gann getting ninth. How about that for the driver starting out for the first time? And Torrey Thompson and the rest starting back a lap down or so, finishing out 10th round out of your top 10 here. But, man, oh, man, oh, man, what a start to this one. We will talk. Hopefully with one of our drivers here in a minute. But we will give a go ahead and put up our third place finishers and everything here tonight. I don't. I know we will not talk with uh, Cindy. And I don't believe Mr. Uh, Keith will be joining us. What a night it has been though. What a race. And this is just the first one guys. We got one more coming your way in a minute. But Keith put on a fight. Put on a show. Gave her everything she had. Game up third. Nothing to sneeze at, though. Second, of course, going to the closer. And I think there's a reason why we nicknamed her the closer a long time ago. It's because of stuff like this. What a night it has been. Race fans, though, we have a driver that's ready to talk with us. He comes to you. Found in victory lane here at Richmond, Virginia race. This is Mr. Jeffrey Oaks. Jeffrey, man, what a fight, what a night, and by 900 a second, you hold off Cindy there. Well, now, folks, we might have a little bit of technical difficulty on our end here. You got me now, Crusader? Hey, there he is. He's back. What's up, right buddy? Here. What's yeah. up? Back Yo. in Victory Lane. What's up? Ah, not much, man. How's it feel to be back in Victory Lane? I haven't seen you here in a while. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, but sporadic. Um, Good. These trucks were a handful tonight. Um, And I was actually able to drive from last to first with 0x. So, uh, to me, that's even a bigger win than the win itself is to be able to make it all night 60 laps um, and no incidents. That's a big win for me on my driving. Um, there's a great group of drivers out there. Uh, I think we had the two cautions all night, so that was good. Um, good hard racing. I was about to say, man, I mean, I was talking about it all over and over again here tonight. These things are not easy to handle, much less control, and yet somehow you guys made it look rather easy out there. How was the setup when you felt it? Eh, w wicked loose on new tires. Um, after you put about five to six laps on them, it actually drove pretty well. You could uh, push it a little more in the corners and you could get back to the gas a little earlier on exit. Um, and first two laps on fresh tires, though, they were a handful. If you overdrove it in the slightest, it would just it would kick out on you. So uh, definitely a throttle game tonight. For sure there. But hey, man, nevertheless, you're walking away with the W for the first time here in Season 2. Who do you want to thank here? Who got you here, man? Uh, I want to thank my beautiful wife. Her birthday was yesterday. Uh, had a great day today. Love her, love her supporting me doing this. Um, PTM for everything you guys do up there in the booth. Pushing Real Limits Racing League. It's a fun league to run in. Um, I think it's interesting running different things every week. Um, and the competition. Like these guys, Keith, Cindy, all these guys, like they run you clean and they run you hard. And that's what this racing's all about. It doesn't get much better than that. Sure there, Jeffrey. Nevertheless, man, you're walking away with the W here. Congratulations, buddy. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your race winner here tonight, Jeffrey Oaks, pulling off the W and when you least expect it. All right, race fans, that's going to wrap it up for your first race of your Memorial Day weekend race series. But we got one more before we call it a night. And also, real quick, before I go, I just want to say this to um, all our veterans out there. Thank you so much. Thank you for those that have taken their time to risk their lives to give to this great country, this greatest country in the United States. Honestly, man, I love this place, and I love 
everything that has gone through in my life and I would not be here if it weren't for all the people that have made it so good and those great men and women out there that have done right for this mil for this great country and all that this honestly is to be the place to be this is the place that you know we need here honestly it's been a pleasure to call for this one here guys and I hope some of my military family and personnel are watching this one here tonight. I dedicate these uh, calls to you as well as everyone that has tuned into these shows. Love you all. We'll see you guys next time, though, when Pushing Limits brings back the action here next week. But we're going one more round. We've got Irox coming up next. Be safe. God bless. Take care. We'll see you here in a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen.